and it ignites and goes while you're holding your marker. Hey guys, Beaver here. Today we're gonna go over my top five MagFed beginner mistakes to avoid. I tried to condense it down as much as possible, but keep in the most important information to help you get out on your first days of MagFed on the right foot. This is a series I'm super excited to start because as you guys know, on the field, off the field, online, I like helping you out. I'm always there to help out new players because I want you guys to have the best experience out there. This series is gonna go over your specific gear. I'm gonna test some out, give you my best review. I'm gonna go over your gameplay, uh, the most efficient gear placement possible to keep you guys as efficient on the field as possible. My personal drills that I practice at home to be just an absolute force multiplier on the field. And the whole series is gonna be grounded around MagFed because you guys know I love MagFed. So if you agree, disagree, have suggestions, leave them down in the comments. It helps out the channel and it helps me get the best information to beginners like you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to follow along. All right, number one, do not buy a cheap mask. A good mask should be your first investment. I know a lot of people think, oh, I gotta get a good MagFed marker. You can't really use a good MagFed marker when you can't see on the field because you got a rental mask and you're fogged over. Get a good mask first. Doesn't matter what kind you get, you probably have to experiment a bit to find what exactly you like, but you need a good mask first. Now, when you're looking for a good mask, you've got to make sure that it's a thermal dual pane lens in the mask. A lot of the time, if you're spending more than $100 on a mask, it's going to have one, which is great. Just ask whoever you're trying to buy it from, whatever store, Defcon, Tactical, Tier 1, Rockstar. They'll, let you, they'll, they'll tell you if it's dual pane or not. Now, lastly, with masks, when you get your dual pane lens, do not submerge this in water to clean it. I've seen a lot of people do it, and in between the two layers, the two panes, is an adhesive, and when you submerge it in water, the water starts to eat away the adhesive, the panes will start to split, and as soon as you do, it'll fog up all on the inside and all the way across. Don't submerge these lenses, you'll destroy them, and then you'll be out, I don't know, 60 to $110, depending on what type of lens you want, depending on what type of mask it's for. All you need to do, get some Windex, or even just water, spray it, microfiber it, good as new. You don't need to submerge it. Number two, clean and maintain your equipment before putting it away in storage, especially over like the off season or the winter months where it's gonna be away for four, five, six months. Clean the paint out of everything, out of the barrels, out of the breech, out of the bodies, out of your mags, off your mask. The, if you leave it for four, five, six months, it's gonna turn into like a cement. You're gonna have to chip it away. If you're chipping away on your mask, you could crack your mask, you could scratch or destroy your blends. Uh, in your mags, you could destroy the springs. You might have to chip it away at the body and then it might leave rough patches. It could break the paint in your mags. You wanna destroy a barrel trying to chip away dry paint inside. Same with the breech. You could end up making a little burr on the inside that just slowly wears away at your bolt and then you're destroying stuff for no reason. Just clean the paint up before you put it away. It's simple. It takes you like an hour probably to do all your equipment. It's not that bad. Also, before putting it away, before the winter months, depress anything with springs. If you have this winded up for the whole winter that you put it away or the off season and you go to grab it and you load it up, it's probably not going to push paint. The spring's going to be warped. It's going to lose its tension. Real steel guys are gonna say in the comments, oh, you can leave your mags loaded for months. Yeah, for real steel magazines, you probably can. They have a way higher tolerance, way higher standards. Our standards on these springs are way lower. Uh, not specifically these, but I mean paintball in general. The standards are lower because it's not for home defense, it's for a uh, hobby. Uh, so don't destroy your mags by leaving the springs completely compressed over a few months putting them away in storage. Same with your markers. I know my FSC, I never store it with the spring inside. Uh, it's only in there right now, specifically for this video. Always take the spring out before putting it away in storage because that spring will warp and it'll stop holding your barrel and then it'll be off center and it'll just blow up paint every time you shoot. And that's no fun for anyone. And I know, I think it's the T15. You're not even supposed to put it away at the end of the day with the barrel in it. You're supposed to take it off because it'll grab the bolt or something. 
I've never owned a T15, I don't know. Someone will correct me down in the comments. Please do. I have no idea about T15s. I have a rough idea how they work, and I've just never owned one. Uh, lastly, clean and lube slash grease your O-rings. Uh, you don't want to put it away for that amount of time with no grease or new lube or anything on it because if you just pick it up and then go to shoot it right away in your new, in the fresh season, the, the O-rings might be dried out, they might start to crack and they could just blow up and then you'll have leaks all over the place. Uh, so I suggest doing it before putting in storage rather than when you take it out because when you take it out it might slip your mind you might be late to a game day something like that and if you just do it while you're cleaning everything everything's usually always a part anyway to get the paint out it's just easier that way three do not take your marker apart without knowing how now i'm not saying don't take it apart and don't clean it especially after the last section but what i'm saying is watch a video or two or four to figure out how it comes apart and how it goes back together. Because the last thing you wanna do is open it up, springs and O-rings go flying everywhere, you lose a couple and then you can't play your next game day because of it. Especially clamshell markers like Titmans, the Takamo uh, clamshells, they come apart and if you just have it flipped on the wrong side and take it apart, the little trigger springs go flying, O-rings come off, even like the 468 when you separate the upper and lower, there's a little O-ring gasket there. If you lose that, you can't play, you just leak air all day. There's countless videos online of how to take every single marker apart, except for maybe the SAR-12, there is not a lot of videos on that one. I was trying to put some out myself, but I ran out of time and then I sold it. But the SAR-12 is not for beginners. This is for beginners. So we don't even look at the SAR-12 right now. Some parts on markers are not meant to be taken apart and if you take them apart there could be damage and you have to replace the whole thing or they are built from the manufacturer to replace the whole thing when it's worn out. Uh, it could also void your warranty if you take apart those specific parts and then you're like hey Planet Eclipse, hey Tiberius or First Strike or whatever your new name is. Uh, I took this apart and now my marker doesn't work and they're gonna be like, sorry, that voids your warranty. You weren't supposed to take that apart. You're kind of stuck there. Also, if you take it apart and you lose a bunch of little, like if you lose a little spring and you got no trigger power anymore because there's nothing there, then you got a big headache of going to the SKU rental fleet to get them to fix your marker or taking it to Tactical Sports or any other of the booths that do repairs. Save yourself the headache. Just watch one, two, four, five, twelve videos first. Learn how to take it apart properly so that you can properly clean it, put it back together, assemble it right, and then you're ready for game day. You don't miss out on anything. You're not stuck with a headache trying to find the parts to replace it. And you just get to go out and play. Number four. I wish I didn't even have to make this section, but I see it so often that I have to put it in the video. Do not look down the barrel of your marker without a mask on and do not take your mask off on the field. Only take your mask off when you're back in staging or in a dead box and everyone's got barrel bags on their markers or no one has a marker in the dead box. You do not want to get shot in the soft tissue of your face or in your eyes. Ugh, don't do it. Just keep your mask on, stay safe. If you're fogged up, you can't see where you're going, you got nothing but blurs, call over a ref. They'll guide you to safety to take your mask off to clean it, or they'll guide you back to staging so you can clean it. Don't take your mask off on the field. Looking down the barrel of your marker, the only time you should ever do it is when you know you take your mag out, you look in the breech, there's no paint. Take the tank off, no more air. If there might be, I know my FSC holds one last charge in the regulator, so if I have the tank, if I have no air to it, and there's paint still in it, I can pull the trigger still, and it'll give me one last one. So take the tank off, take the paint out, make sure there's no paint, pull the trigger once to make sure there's no air in the system, and then you can look down your barrel. Even then, don't look down your barrel. Take the barrel off, clean the barrel. Don't look down the barrel without your mask on, or just put the mask on and look down the barrel. You don't wanna get shot point blank in the eye. You're gonna have a bad time if you do. Lastly, number five, the most important thing in this video, 
do not put oil in your tank regulator. I see some people, they'll put oil down the fill nipple or in the, just don't put oil in here. The, most of these regulators are built to run off a very small and limited amount of grease, not oil. The issue with oil is under pressure and use, the oil has a chance to ignite. And if you're on the field and you put oil in here and it ignites and goes boom while you're holding your marker, you're going to have a bad day. Not only do you wreck your tank, you might wreck your arms or whatever else it possibly could hit. Do not put oil in your tank regulators, please. It is a huge danger and a huge risk to yourself and everyone around you. Just don't do it. And that is our top five MagFed beginner mistakes that you don't want to make on your first days playing MagFed. Uh, I originally wrote about three pages of things, but I had to cut it down to the top five. So we're going to make it into a series, like I said before. So stay tuned. New, experienced player, doesn't matter. I know I learn tips and tricks all the time from watching these videos that I've never learned before. And I've been playing for four years and you guys know I went hard on into MagFed. Uh, if there's any more mistakes that I missed here that you guys think should be in a video, drop them down in the comments. We could always come back for a part two. That's no problem. We can set it up. We can get it done for you. But that's it for today, and I'll catch you guys out on the field.